So it seems that um, there's no more DC Comics Extended Universe, unlike the MCU. Uh, Kevin Sujihara uh, said today, uh, the CEO of uh, Warner Brothers, said that uh, they're not going to focus on the, the Extended Universe for DC Comics, but individual movies. So we've got Shazam coming up, and then the Joker with um, Joaquin Phoenix. And then I think Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn in the Birds of Prey. And then we got the Wonder Woman 1984 sequel, and on and on and on. <clears throat> Let me take a small water break here. This is good water. So I bought Justice League earlier this year. And I really liked it. I didn't like Steppenwolf. I thought Steppenwolf was a rough draft of what a good villain could have been. I wrote a fan fiction about the minions of Dark Side, kind of operate like kind of like the last season. If you remember the last season of Smallville, how you had Steppenwolf and uh, D Sod. I don't know if it's Steppenwolf. I think it was Granny Goodness, D Sod. And someone else. You had three minions of Dark Side. You saw you kind of saw Dark Side in a Phantom Crow form, but I think if it was more like the movie, if if you split the difference between the Smallville version of, of Apocalypse and what you saw in, in Justice League, you would have had a, a much better villain. But the real reason I liked this movie was because of all the characters coming together. Bruce Wayne is better than Batman when it comes to Ben Affleck. I mean, if you had put Jim Caviezel, Jim Caviezel as Batman and Bruce Wayne, way better movie. Uh, this movie would get a 9, but I'd give it about a 7.8 or 8 out of 10. So this is like the only real, you know, hardcore, other than Batman versus Superman, this is the real result of trying to do a DCEU. But I still think that this movie deserves a sequel. <clears throat> I really wish that Mr. Suji or Sujihara-san um, would not give up on that. <clears throat> it's really important to kind of see if you can do another Justice League movie, but do the individual movies. Um, you know, the, the point is, is not to try too hard. You know, when they started out with Iron Man with Robert Downey Jr., this was before Disney took over, and there were not not so many thoughts of connecting the characters. Um, you had Hulk with Ed Norton, the, the Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton, which is supposedly in continuity. And then you have the Avengers. Well, actually, let's see. You had Thor. But I think it wasn't until like, maybe it was Iron Man 2. You had Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson, con the connection between him going between all the superheroes. Captain America, the first Avenger, and then Thor, Thor, the Dark World, and then Avengers. So that was sort of a sort of a kind of a happy accident that Marvel got to where they are today. Um, but I think that given enough time, a DCEU is possible and probable if you work on these individual superheroes. It's like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers said, you know, work on Batman, work on Superman, and you know, as well as Aquaman and Cyborg and Flash and whoever, and Geoforce. Remember Geoforce? And the, how about the Metal Men? I wonder if somebody, if somebody tried to do a Geoforce movie and try to make money off of it before, how, how long would it be before Warner Brothers found out? It'd be like, uh, do we own Geoforce? Oh, we do? Oh, they can't do that. <laughs> so, Geo, poor Geoforce. He doesn't get any love. But, um, yeah, I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move for now. But I, like I'm saying here, Justice League deserves a sequel. If they could adapt it based on what we saw in the post, in the final post credits scene, if they did it like Rock of Ages in 1997, that story where you had the electric Superman and you had the Injustice Gang, if they did, if they did an adaptation where you saw, an, uh, you, saw you would see the Justice League tearing down Star City, but they're holograms and the villains are in the background trying to not so much frame the Justice League, but capture their powers. And it'd be a long, kind of drawn-out story, but kind of condensed to two and a half hours. Rock of Ages is good. I recommend you pick it up. It's a really good story. I have those in original form, not the trade. But um, no, this was a good movie. 
7.8 out of 10. I, I don't blame you. If any of you didn't like this movie, I think Anna, that Star Wars girl, didn't like Aquaman. I'm not sure if she liked this movie, but she didn't like Aquaman. I loved Aquaman, and I dare say Aquaman is better than Justice League. But this movie on its own is good. And you have to go back, Warner Brothers, I would say you have to go back and look at what made that movie work and what made what didn't work and then see about seeing us making a sequel. And maybe, in fact, if if Shazam turns out pretty good, then Shazam should be part of this. You know, uh, I don't know about Harley Quinn being a good, you know, a, a hero and not a villain. But, you know, we got Will Smith dropped out of being dead shot. So who knows what's going to it's all it's all messed up. Um, but I do like this movie. I like it more than The Avengers. And I will dare say Steppenwolf is better than Loki. I mean, Loki was just over the top. Steppenwolf's, Steppenwolf's acting was about very interesting, very interesting to subpar. At times he was just boring because he was a floaty kind of CGI. And other times he was like, he seemed like a real person. It's like, it's like he was asleep most of the time. But that back that backstory where he did battle was like Masters of the Universe. It was really cool. Um, so that's it. So there's no DCEU uh, as far as the movies go. The television show is still a different story. I mean, we're all waiting for that one. So you have the Arrowverse. So you have Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, and uh, DC Legends of Tomorrow all still connected to each other with Black Lightning pending. <clears throat> And I did enjoy the Elseworlds crossover uh, last last year, so a few months ago, a couple of months ago. And we're going to have the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover for 2019, for fall 2019 to early 2020. I'm not sure if it's going to run out through, through the entire seasons. And they can do a lot of things. They can connect Krypton. They can connect the Titans. They can connect um, just every every character. <laughs> I'm trying to think which one of these actors could be on TV, but just about all of them cannot. Maybe Superman, maybe Henry Cavill. But so whoever takes over as Batman and then you have these other guys, I think that, you know, I think there are a good number of you that that do agree with me that there needs to be a Justice League sequel. Much better writing, much better villains. If they can replace uh, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, but let's get somebody else. Anybody else. I mean, you know, just anyone else. James Franco. Just somebody somebody who can really play Lex Luthor better. But Lex Luthor and his Injustice Gang versus the Injustice the Justice League. In in that story in Rock of Ages, all Lex Luthor wanted to do was get rid of the Justice League. It wasn't about doing evil things. It was about getting a bunch of villains together with the Philosopher's Stone. That was really a good one. So right now I think it's a good move. But I think it's not a great move. And I think that if you pay attention to this, <clears throat> look at the look at the look at the the positives. Look at the light and the sparks. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's about how all these characters can come together. Just like the song. And um just imagine a sequel with uh Jim Caviezel and um maybe maybe Levi uh, Zachary is it Zachary Miller? Is that his name? Zachary Miller, the one who played Chuck, who's Shazam, and a couple of other people. We'll see what happens. So um, with that, as far and if I may say, the whole Rotten Tomatoes political nonsense is nonsense. Um, you know, identity politics is BS. The message we all have to kind of remember, and this has to do with Justice League, is we all share. Everyone shares. Whites, blacks, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants, Catholics, Mexicans, Indians, Middle Easterns, chubby, tall, short, two heads, one head, um, you know, double jointed, single jointed, you know, stunt, stunt men, actors, TV actors, commercial actors, movie actors, uh, jazz musicians, police officers, uh, you know, spacemen. Uh, lizard people, we're we're all sharing the same universe. We share the same planet. Instead of instead of identity polit, polit, political narratives, 
brought on by selfish Hollywood stars, whether they're voice actresses or those actors from Who's the Boss, <laughs> it's better to say everyone shares. Everyone works together. Everyone comes together. Everyone shares. That's the narrative that we all should follow. You know, um, I don't, I don't, I fault some of the people who were trying to say they don't want to see Captain Marvel. But for a lot of people, they just want to make sure that it's a good movie that they feel comfortable seeing at the same time. They don't want to feel intimidated or harassed by an actress who has barely gotten her feet wet in the MCU. So that's all anybody else is worried about. And that's all I would be worried about. But I'm not looking forward to Captain Marvel, to be honest with you. I'm looking more forward to uh, Dark Phoenix. Because that's going to be the last X-Men movie where they could they can say fuck and shit and asshole and motherfucker and flip off, give the bird and do all kinds of stuff. And so like you got to get those fuck yous and motherfuckers out of the way. Because once this X-Men movie is put up there on the screen and Disney gets a hold of it, that's it. You got to say mother truckers and uh, <laughs> uh, bleep you. You know, I was like, oh, wow, what happened to our X-Men movies? I bet you they're going to try to use the same actors. Once Disney gets a hold of Fox, they're going to use the same actors from the uh, original, from the uh, first class crew. Get James McAvoy. Maybe. I, I think James McAvoy said he's going to drop out of X-Men, but I'm not sure. A lot of gossip. A lot of things going on. So uh, watch Justice League. Uh, keep an eye out for the stars. And uh, everybody come together. Everybody shares. Forget, the, forget anything else. That's all you need to know. I mean, one lecture from Clayton Moore, the Lone Ranger, would put Brie Larson in her place. And when we watch movies we love and we see a shared universe, whether it's through 10 years or five years of movies, the real reward is the interconnectivity. That's it. So... Let's keep our fingers crossed for a Justice League sequel. Let's see how Crisis uh, does for the Arrowverse. And uh, let's, uh, let's look out for more hero, superhero stuff. Hopefully Geoforce or the Metal Men. <laughs>